everybody welcome back uh, first thing before we uh, start exploring Grunty's lair for the last two worlds um, we have to do this now again before you jump to conclusions Yes, you can. Um, there is one more code that we can get. Um, we've got blue eggs. We just got red feathers. So clearly the last one is gold feathers. So how about I... Um, how about I put in red feathers first? R... E... D... F E A T H E R S Get 100 red feathers. 100 maximum now is. Oh, my feathers. It makes me sick. Fly to me, your butt I'll kick. So let's try it. Let's try to put in gold feathers. See how the G doesn't light up like the E and R did when we had the clue? Even though we have a pretty good... Even though we're pretty clear on the idea that we have to put in gold feathers, we actually have to wait until we're actually given gold feathers as a code to put in um because in reality it's actually power-ups it's not an actual uh it's not an actual like cheat you know i forget what you have to do to actually get it um while we're over here i actually wanted to show off shark um shark food island because it's the only place i hadn't actually shown of where it is um Uh, except for Gobi's Desert, it's just basically a room, but I at least showed you that it's open. So this place over here is what you have to do. It's arguably the only one they actually like put any time and effort into because it's an actual like jumping puzzle. You get so high up that uh, the previous jumps are. S okay, right here is where the egg would be. Um, I might as well show it off now. Does it wrap back around? Nope. You just hold the stick so it um. Scrolls through them faster. Here it is. Uh, you'll notice actually something very interesting. It's, um... Okay. So there's seven. Which means, um... In... Ow. I was gonna say there... Uh, it means that two of the worlds don't have one, but that's actually not true. Um, oddly enough, I think, um, yeah, it's three worlds that don't have anything related to uh, pieces. It's uh, Mumbo's Mountain, 
uh, Clanker's Cavern and and Bubble Gloop Swamp. I always forget the name of uh, the fourth world. sitting for far too long. This is like my... This is the eighth episode for today. Oh! So you may remember that there is... There actually is a, um... Puzzle right here. But again, like I mentioned last time, there actually isn't a place for us to put it down. Which is, which is kind of weird, because it's like, oh, okay, so this is the last one. No, there's actually one more level before this. So, with that in mind, the only place for us to check is where we just raised the water level. Which is not only where the... Um... The puzzle that we have to complete is, it's also the entrance to the level. They're like right next to each other. Meanwhile, this last world is like dangled like right in front of your face for like the entirety of the game. Okay. Let's head on over. So even the water level in this place is uh, fixed, and as you can see, there is another note door. There is the note door, which means we have to raise the water level one more time. And this is slowed down by a lot. Okay, here we are. So this is clearly the entrance to the world, but um, there's no current way in. So we might as well just like explore the outside right here. Oh look, a rare logo. That raises the, that changes the water level to level two. And there we go. Oh, it's the uh, blue one. There we go. Now, um, ironically, the only reason why that's there is so you don't swim back down and then through the other room, but you have to do that anyway uh, to get to the note door. There we go. Here it is. Rusty Bucket Bay. Um, but that's not the only thing that's here. As you can tell, there was actually another place we can go to. Is it? It's Mad Monster Mansion. So you could have actually, um, so this is the grate that was actually all the way back there, meaning if there was a way to open up this grate, you would basically have a shortcut. 
between areas, showing that things in this world are actually kind of con um, are actually much more well connected than people um, remember. To this day, I will still defend the idea that Banjo Kazooie as a series has a lot more in relation to uh, the early PlayStation Castlevania games. Yeah, the PlayStation Castlevania games more than they have to uh, games like Mario. Um, yeah, games like uh, Super Mario 64. The reason why I believe this is because um, at the end of the day, this is all about how interconnected a world, um, about interconnectivity in the world itself. And here we are. Oh, and 7.65. So the only way in there is by fully completing eight worlds. And here it is. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. It's like now we have to travel back to that area to find it. And again, like when you look at Super Mario 64, it's generally a very straight line. To all this stuff. Some. There it is. So this button right here will actually drop the water level all the way back down. Oh no, I actually rise it all the way back up. Oh. I was like, what's the purpose of this? I'm like, oh yeah. Because it, um, it raises this place's water level up all the way as well. Hmm. Maybe I'm missing something. Oh well. Okay. Next time we're going to be uh, going into one of the most hated worlds in all of platformers. I am kind of being a little hyperbolic, but when people hear the music of Rusty Bucket Bay, people actually do start getting a little stressed. And I'll show off why in the next episode. Goodbye. Everybody, welcome back. Um... So, this is a little mini episode that I'm going to be doing, uh, that, I, that I'm probably going to release on the same day. Uh, so I actually figured out why, what that button does. It goes up there. Um, I'm probably going to release this at the same time I release the other one. Because um, I foolishly didn't actually like look around the place.
uh, trying to remember what's up there. Uh, what actually is up there is the final uh, is the um, final Cheeto page, which I probably should get because Golden Feathers is are a lot more useful to have than Red Feathers in the next world. So let's try to get that, and then we're gonna go put in the code. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the game's like, I'm pretty sure you're holding the controller backwards. I'm like, it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it will, it wants you to believe that. Okay, now we just head straight up. There it is. There we go. I would hate to have uh, had to do that a second time. Baron Bird getting good at finding Cheeto, so another spell they shall have. That traitor book has pushed it its luck, so in the burning fire I'll chuck. Finding Cheeto, um, Cheeto which won't. Code you must enter on Sandcastle floor and Treasure Trove Cove is... Gold feathers. When the back of uh, Grunty's hand whoops your butt, you'll hardly stand. Let's go through the uh, cauldrons. Let's get back. There we go. And that is how you avoid um, a large amount of the travel time in this um, in this game. Is those cauldrons were put there specifically so uh, people don't have to travel as much going up and down, especially back to previous areas like that, um, like to the sandcastle. I mean, which I guess means that we have to, ironically, we're finishing this episode, same way we started the, um, we started the other one. I might actually just try to get the episodes just like sewn together, so it's just one cohesive thing. Okay. See, now it lights up. Yeah, I'm trying to type in uh, gold eggs. There we go. Now I have 20. New maximum, 20 eggs. Gold feathers you may have, 20. But bruises you'll still get a plenty. So that's about it. Uh, next, um, next episode we're actually going to be doing the whole thing.
Might as well. Yeah. So we, sh we could actually just put in the uh, um, the one for the the final world, but I kind of don't want to because it's sort of a uh, as of right now it's sort of a thing where we only unlock the worlds that we're about to go into. Okay, now we're back here. Yep. And now we're back. <laughs> the water had to load in for a second. Yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.